Welcome to the Kinetic Belief Podcast. I'm so excited to champion and encourage you every week, right here. Pushing the boundaries of expectations and rewriting the rules of adventure are the reasons we get up in the morning. This is a way of life, a huge and growing community of explorers and adventurers, leading the way, blazing new trails, and raising the bar. We share your hunger for a life without limits, and we know you'll stop at nothing to get there. Megan, this is beautiful. Once again, you know, we're just so blessed. It's, it's just such a, an amazing experience to be out here in wild places. It is an abundant life. It, it really is, is. absolutely stunning out here. The sky is, it almost doesn't look real. It's like uh, a Truman Show moment or something. <laughs> well, we got <laughs> trout in the stream behind us. There's rocky cliffs. There's the uh, a Comanche Rock is what they call it right over here. We're at about 12,000 feet. And the uh, up in the Colorado Rockies, down right on the border of New Mexico. Oh, it's just beautiful. The the amount of vast open space here, and timber, and and wildlife. We we've seen bighorn sheep and coyotes, and oh, yeah. so much happening out here. Well, most of the most of our listeners that listen to our podcast know that we come out into these wild places so that we can intrinsically turn our thoughts mm -hmm. inward, because yes. that's where you come in tune and in touch with creativity. Yes. We're all creators here in uh, the physical and it's your imaginations that's drawing the substance of things hoped for into manifestation absolutely so we work on that that's what this podcast is all about listening will help you work on your own creations and uh, take control of the things that you're manifesting to make sure that you're not bringing in the undesirables <laughs> into your life <laughs> I love that I love that um with kinetic belief you've talked a lot about identity as of late and how imaginings what you are what you're allowing yourself to imagine is creating not only your identity but the life that you're surrounded by um are we going to talk about that some more today yeah i think so and you know a lot there, there's some people that haven't heard sort of some of my backstory uh i've been doing this all my life i've been teaching this now for 20 years out uh with groups all over the country, all over the world. and uh, But I came into this world, into the physical, knowing this already. And it's something I thought everybody was doing. At the age of five years, I was uh, kinetically attracting and believing uh, manifestations into my life. And I just thought it's something that everybody did. But I learned later on that it's not, and it's unique, and it is a practice. A lot of our uh, listeners and people that come to our workshops, they also have been aware that they are attracting their imaginations. But it's, the, it's coming into the understanding, into oneness with being able to control the manifestations that is the, the desire of the kinetic belief practitioner. I taught myself through the universe, the substance of things hoped for to play the piano, as you know five years of age and I started it's I had a strong desire to play I didn't even have a piano I had just seen one on I think it was on television I saw someone playing this thing and I can remember it like it was yesterday and I'm thinking I'm I want to do that next thing you know an old piano was brought into our home no one else played but there was an old piano the thing didn't half work next thing you know a friend of the family came in and fixed it and then I just start playing and imagining melodies. And I, uh, through that vision of playing, self-taught myself. Don't read, but over the years now, I have all my music orchestrated. I have hours and hours of this original music that's come through the universe that I play. And you can listen to on Pandora or Spotify. And uh, <clears throat> these are just fully orchestrated arrangements that... Through kinetic belief, I was able to attract into my life, but at a very early age. Do you think you can use kinetic belief to attract literally anything you can possibly imagine into your life? <laughs> That's the key. Anything you can imagine, you can manifest mm -hmm. into your life. The, the, the difference is, is that we're always manifesting good and bad. What you want to do is just to manifest the good. How do you do that? You cast down imaginations like we were talking about last week. Mm. Do you think, do you consider this process, um, let's say, take your story. 
say someone out there, they're not five years old, but they want to play the piano. They want to attract that into their life. Do you think that process of doing that is hard? Would you consider that hard work? Would you consider it difficult? No, I don't. Because if there's a desire to do it, it's fun. Mm -hmm. If, if you are, if you are desiring the things that you're creating, you never work. Work is a misnomer. Nobody should, no one, no creator should ever spend one day of their life working. To work means to toil. Mm -hmm. That means to sweat. As creators, when you're in that purpose, when you're on that creative plane and you're casting down the negativity and you're remaining positive and you are walking in unconditional love for yourself and for everyone else, you're in sweatless victory. And in that place of sweatless victory, you're never working. Mm, that's for a person, though, that's using the example of playing the piano, let's say you're 70 years old and you decide you want to play the piano. What do they say? Well, you can't te teach an old dog new tricks. Well, you're right. And someone else that says, well, you can teach an old dog new tricks, they are right. <laughs> Both of them are right because it's what they imagine. Yeah. So it's, it's possible. The, the thing is, is that the longer you wait in the land of the living before you begin to cast down the negativity, you're going to have some work to do to unbecome the things that you've become. You unbecome the negativity. You unbecome you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You unbecome, well, you're not, you're not musical. You unbecome, well, you're tone deaf. You unbecome all of the negativity and condemnation to become what's left, and that is your purpose and the creative desires of your heart. I love unbecoming. Um, it, it really agrees with my, my personality um, because I like that it takes a little ego. I like that you have to sort of say, get off me, everyone. Um, if I want to play the piano at 70, um, I can. I absolutely can. I love the, the little bit of aggression that comes with um, demanding, put in, putting a demand on how you see yourself, how people see you, what you believe you can accomplish. Do you know ego is something that is actually healthy? Ego is actually humility. Ego is believing that you are worthy believing that you are not a victim, believing that you're not offended, believing that you're not, you weren't put here to be in charge and in control of the world. Yeah. Ego says that I am beautifully made. I am wonderfully fashioned. I can do whatever I want to do and I can go wherever I want to go. That is ego just coming into agreement yes. with your individuality and your purpose. Yes, we are creators. That's right. Every everyone, everyone, yeah. everybody is created in the image of the Creator. Right before the Big Bang, and this was proven in 2012 using the, the Hadron Collider, uh, they proved that there is a God particle. They proved that there was belief before the Big Bang, that there was a structure that, that determined the mass and the way that all things in the universe would be formed. So, in the image of that Creator, we too are creators. We call things that be not as though they were, in the physical. You and I and everybody listening to this has that ability. Whatever you believe to be true is true. And you know, we've heard this said a lot in society as of late, well, that's my truth. Well, there's truth to that's your truth because you're creating your own reality. What we want to do as practitioners of the law of kinetic belief, which just means putting a continuous motion behind the belief, mm. is to cast down opposing ideas. When you have that good thought that you're going to maintain, you're going to journal it, and you're going to put it into your calendar, and you're going to hold fast to it, then you are not going to ever allow an alternative idea come in. Once you've determined that to be your truth, mm -hmm. stand on it. That's why having a planner is so vitally important to everybody's success yes. so that you don't forget the, where you started and you can stay uh, steadfast in that vision and in that plan. We started talk, this podcast by talking about imaginations, um, which I, I find imaginations just fascinating. They can be such a, a, a point of huge success, but then they can also be extremely sneaky, I have found. And you can... You can be having these horrible imaginations, almost not even realizing you're having them. And I hope that makes sense. It's almost like some of us can go on autopilot. And it's, I want to hear your, your techniques for sort of waking yourself up um, on a daily basis, remembering, you know, just getting yourself to remember 
goodness, how to keep your thoughts in control, your emotions in control. Well, it's what you come into agreement with. And so many people are insecure because they've allowed themselves to be around bullies. Mm. Their spouse is a bully. They, they were raised by bullies. They had uh, brothers or sisters that wow. were bullies, kids that were bullies in school. And so what happens is if we don't learn to, first of all, Cat, cast cast away all of those. Those are imaginations, mm-hmm. by the way. Bullies are giving you things to consider other than truth. And everything that you adhere to that comes from a bully is a lie. Because you're perfect. Everybody's perfect. There, there, there is no bad. The only thing that's bad is imaginations. The only thing that's bad is attitude. Now, I'm not saying there are not bad actions, but I'm saying there are no bad people. There are people that commit bad actions. Mm -hmm. So you separate actions from people. And when you do that, then you can unconditionally love the bullies. You can unconditionally love everyone from your life, recognizing that an action was just someone that was off the track. And it's just like an engine, a train engine. It's off track. It's still a perfectly good engine. It's just off track. It's Mm -hmm. in the ditch. But it's still a train engine. Mm -hmm. People are the same way unconditionally love them and then you begin to adhere to your own thoughts once you decide who you are intrinsically what you want and aspire to never ever counsel with man again about who you are other people would love to define you but that's not their business no more than it's your business to define other people and if we find ourselves wanting to control other people then we're off track (laughs) Right. That sounds like a big spiral. <laughs> You're just sort of, you know, one bad imagination leads to it's a, train wreck. Hor- That's the train a train wreck. wreck. That's what that is. A personal train wreck. <laughs> we are responsible for ourselves and our own attitudes and remaining grateful in perfect gratitude for what we are imagining the perfect life, a perfect health, mm. perfect finances. I am wealthy and you are wealthy. You are healthy and strong. We have sound minds. We have a perfect purpose in this life and we are going to adhere to that and we're going to imagine it and believe it until we attract it and it's then manifest changing our circumstances around us what do you do if you um, have an extremely close relationship whether it's a marriage or familial relationships and you are working really hard very diligently to attract all of this positivity wealth health um, but then this other person in your life, they're not buying into it. They, they, they just, they're like, eh, that's a lot of Scooby-Doo spooky stuff. And I just, I don't believe it. Relationships are actually easier than most people think. The only thing that's difficult about checking relationships is if you allow emotions to become involved. There's only a right way and a wrong way to be in relationship with people. And cast down the emotions. Emotions would have you, well, that's somebody I've just always been with. It's like an old photograph. You just don't don't want to part with it. Any relationship, be it family, friends, a co-worker, a spouse, Anyone that's in your life that you're going to give access to you, uh, this has to be, it must be, if you're going to be successful in this life as a creator, this has to be somebody that celebrates you, Mm. edifies you, champions you, and encourages you. Never someone that's in opposition, that's condemning, judging, telling you you should not, could not, shouldn't have. That's negative energy. That is decay. Celebration and edification, championing, all of that's positive energy. And that's expanding your territory. That's health. That's growth. And that's diversity. And that is leading you to the perfect life and also a nurturing plane where you can create and attract the perfect life. So it sounds like that you are by setting boundaries you are loving yourself unconditionally you're loving everyone around you unconditionally and i think that probably is a huge step in the right direction toward creating this garden that you've talked about you've you've mentioned that we all have these personal gardens that we're cultivating Um, and i'd like you to expound a little more on how you decide what to pursue because for me i'm always very aware that you know 
mentally, we only have a certain amount of bandwidth daily <laughs> to give to something. <laughs> right. um, energy, mental energy. Right. Right. How do you decide? Because you can't just constantly be going around like, I receive everything. I receive everything. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you just hone in on this one thing? How do you decide what's important enough? Yeah, you know, that's a, uh, another great question, and that's coming into uh, a place of knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. And I would say, and, and, and this has been the case not only for myself, but, uh, and I know for you as well, that if you believe that you are aspiring to something that's going to cost you, then it is not part of your purpose. Nothing should cost you. Mm -hmm. Nothing should require... Um, uh, some of your virtue. You should not have to lay any of you down in order to receive or achieve something. In fact, there is an ease to graduation in life. There is a, in your perfect place, and in your perfect attraction, uh, there is a sweatless uh, approach and a pursuit of that thing. And so you do a gut check and if you see that if there's any fear, if there's any worry, if there's anxiety to this thing that you believe you want, then it's something that does not really have a place in your life. Very Sometimes powerful. we buy into the brochures or we buy into the, the sure. books or, you know, the boat salesman, which we talked about a few weeks ago, or <laughs> yes. the, the huge house. Oh, if I just had a, a 17,000 square foot home and, or, you know, or whatever it is. Usually that's if you find that to be the case, once you put into that house, you go, oh my goodness, I got to clean it. <laughs> or where's my husband? The where's my are wife? What? <laughs> I, yeah, whatever it is, but it's not actually what you, what the purpose was. And, mm. and I would also say that usually it's not a thing. Wow. It's, a, it's a, something that you're able to put your hands to and to create and mold and express yourself through. Uh, it could it could be your profession. Maybe it's somebody that has an aptitude for sales. There's an art form to sales. There's an art form to bookkeeping. There's an art form to teaching. There's an art form to uh, managing a group of people. There's an art form to being managed successfully as an employee. So all these things, when you begin to change your 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 perspective of your daily activity maybe is something and I, I know uh, this young lady that used to work for us she uh, had played secretary she told us all while growing up and boy yes. she was a the perfect secretary it was a <laughs> gifting of hers and a passion mm. for her that's beautiful that the, the better you get to know yourself and isn't that why you come out into the into the mountains, mm -hmm. into the forest, mm -hmm. go forest bathing, get to know yourself so that you can hone in on what your passion is, what what really brings you intrinsic, an intrinsic sense of purpose and joy. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, hey, if the 17,000 square foot house is part of your personal uh, journey and purpose, then then it's going to bring you joy and not right. make you sorrowful because mm -hmm. it's a big empty house. You can no only purpose. you can only come in touch with your purpose and what's going to uniquely make you happy by getting away from the the uh, from other people mm. that want to define you or tell you what you should and shouldn't yeah. have. And a lot of people are afraid to do this. They're afraid to get off by themselves and to have time alone. But you've got to be alone to do this. Yes. And to look in the mirror and say, who am I? Why am I really here? And don't be afraid because you're awesome. You know, you're going to yeah, find right. out that mm -hmm. you are made of some mm -hmm. strong stuff and that you are exactly how you should be. Mm -hmm. And man, when you do hone in on that purpose for your life... All bets are off. No one can stop you. The first thing that's going to happen, this is always what happens when somebody gets off by themselves. It's not the positive, but it's the negative that they have to deal with. Mm. Because the, the loudest voice, the, the biggest stronghold is going to be the condemnation, either that was put on self or put on you from somebody else. Yeah. And you check that, immediately recognize anything that smells of condemnation is a lie because you're wow. perfect. Yeah. Everyone's perfect. Everyone was perfectly made in the image of a perfect creator. I I love that. Don't be afraid of dealing with the negative stuff that that's in you because it's all a lie. That's it's, right. It's not who you really are. So you can just rip that bandaid off and move on. That is all of the, all of creation is moving toward perfection. Mm -hmm. So anything that's not positive will no longer exist. When we leave the physical and re-enter into the non-physical, there will mm -hmm. only be positive energy. Beautiful. So perfection. All of creation is moving toward that. So if you can recognize anything that's negative right now, call it for what it is, and it's a lie. It is a lie. It 
came from a liar mm -hmm. and it will not sustain itself. It will, it will not forever exist. It is not eternal. You are eternal. So go ahead and separate I yourself from the thing that is not going to be there forever and ever and ever. I love giving everyone permission to do that. Isn't that what we all need sometimes is a little kick in the pants just to go, you can do this. Quit you're wallowing allowed. around in the mud with condemnation. Yeah, you're allowed to do this. That's right. It's okay. That's right. Um, I would like to hear your explanation of imaginations as it relates to kinetic belief um, and, and from the quantum physics standpoint. Yeah. And so if you could sort of tie those pieces in together um, mm -hmm. here as a final thought. Yeah, it's a big final thought. Yeah. Uh, quantum physics, everything that, it, that is created, the mountains around us, trees, you, me, grass, the water, it's all made of the same stuff. Everything has, is made of the same, exact same, on the level of quantum physics, the same material, the same mass. Mm -hmm. And what we now know, because they've collided particles and they, they've been able to, scientists have actually looked in on creation. And they see that there is a blueprint for design in all that there is. So there is a belief, there was and is a belief behind uh, the original Big Bang. And we being created in the same image of the Creator, our imaginations are actually creating form to mass on the quantum physics level. So we are, if it's something that doesn't already exist, we're actually creating and, and, and allowing the energy in the universe on that creative plane. The God particle then takes and it's like attraction. One thing being attracted to another through the kinetic belief, kinetic being sustained motion. So a sustained imagination a sustained thought for a good thing that you're holding on to. I don't care what they say. I don't care what this looks like. I don't care about the bad report or the bad news. I am holding on to this imagination. I am sustaining kinetic belief, sustaining motion to the mass that already exists in the universe and drawing and attracting that substance into my life where it does mani it will manifest. It has to manifest. It always manifests. And so that's how it works. That's the molecular level of quantum physics, the way that all this works. And the kinetic is, again, the, the sustained motion behind our beliefs. Mm, that's how it so works. So empowering. I love knowing the mechanics, the whys behind how anything works. I think it's incredibly empowering. And it gives you not just the tools that you need, but, but when when something approaches you in life and says, well, I think you're wrong. I'm not sure that this really works. You know why. You know exactly down to the molecular level why it works. You're a creator. Everybody listening to this is a creator. We all have equal value. Creation is not a respecter of persons. We're all equals. We're all equals. We're all worthy of attracting our heart's desire and living the perfect life. Wonderful. Um, well, thank you for all the kinetic belief nuggets today. I have a lot to ponder on this week and a lot of imaginations to stir up. It's Let's exciting. do it again next week. And in the meantime, People Stephen can go Canyon. to the, the website, yes. StephenCanyon.com. Um, the website is just getting bigger every single day. So many th exciting new things are being added from live events to webcasts to the live version of the podcast. You even have these really exciting Q&As where you address very specific life altering questions those are up um, just so many cool things happening and so Stephen s-t-e-v-e-n canyon.com that's right and then also uh, we're going to be doing some retreats probably up in Scotland we'll do another retreat up in Colorado who knows we might even go to Iceland yeah <laughs> I love it total immersion is always a good idea very uh, awesome glad uh, all of our friends were able to tune in again this week yeah me as well thank you for hanging out in this pristine beautiful yeah, uh, almost oh goodness, not even yes. a real place. I appreciate all the time and insight. Keep on kinetically believing, and we'll see you again, talk to you again next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.